setting up funds in general, um, what the promoter will have to think of mainly is in relation to domicile, the fund vehicle itself, and also uh, the investor base, which might have implications on the regulatory regime which that investor might choose. When it comes to, to domicile, this is one of the primary considerations which uh, a fund manager will have to think of. Uh, this is important because it mainly relates to uh, the tax jurisdictions um, as well as to costs and also credibility of the jurisdiction. Historically, the choice tended to be more focused on tax efficient jurisdictions. Um, however, now we're seeing a move towards more regulated jurisdictions due to their strength and reputation. This change is mainly due to uh, changes in the investor's perspective because the investors are now more cautious on reputational risk and also due to the negative approach um, which is being taken by regulators with respect to what are called as tax havens. So whilst typically the fund jurisdiction of choice used to be the Cayman Islands, now investors are looking into a fund in Europe. When it comes to Europe, Malta is picking up as a fund jurisdiction and this is mainly because um, whilst being an onshore solution, Malta in itself um, does not uh, have the high costs which are typically associated with other jurisdictions such as Luxembourg and Dublin for example. The second consideration relates to the fund vehicle. Malta offers a variety of fund vehicles um, which can be used for any kind of underlying asset, investment strategy or investor types. Um, the most popular is always the, the CCAV, which is an investment company with a, with a variable share capital. However, there are other, other vehicles, mainly the Infco, which is the investment company with a fixed share capital, uh, contractual arrangements, uh, unit trust or partnership. A fund can uh, have an external manager, a third party manager, or else be structured as a self-managed fund where a third party manager is not, uh, is not appointed. However, the management of, of the fund is undertaken by appointed approved individuals which form what is called an investment committee. Additionally, the third consideration will need to be the investor type and the regulatory regime which then becomes applicable. Malta offers a um, variety of regimes um, targeting mainly retail and non-retail investors. When it comes to non-retail investors, um, Malta offers the Professional Investor Fund Vehicle, which is the PIF, um, which is mainly split into three categories. Having the PIF, which targets the experienced investor, which is the quasi-retail so-called solution, with a minimum investment entry of uh, 10,000 euros. And there are also the PIFs targeting qualifying investors and the PIFs targeting extraordinary investors um, with the minimum entry levels of uh, 75,000 euros for the PIF targeting qualifying investors and 750,000 euros for the PIF targeting the extraordinary investors. Uh, the last two types of PIF that I just mentioned, the PIF targeting qualifying investors and the PIF targeting extraordinary investors, do not carry with them any leverage restrictions or diversification requirements and no custodian will need to be appointed in that respect. But when it comes to, to retail, Malta offers the, the usage scheme regime in where the, where the usage fund is set up and it can be promoted and distributed to European investors throughout Europe without the need of any additional license. And also one can benefit from the Alternative Investment Fund Managers Directive whereby an alternative investment fund can be set up um, or else they can choose to opt out of the directive if they so qualify. We're seeing a move towards having a regulated product 
and this can clearly be seen from the increasing popularity of what are called as alternative usage schemes whereby the fund manager will prepackage uh, and, and hedge funds into a usage scheme which shows the popularity of having as well a branded fund. As opposed to other European jurisdictions, uh, Malta does not require that the service providers of the fund are also located in Malta and that the fund can be set up the, in Malta. However, the administration and the management can be located elsewhere. Uh, having said that, fund managers still opt to, to set up locally in Malta since Malta offers a cost-effective base, um, striking the right balance between a tax-efficient jurisdiction and not being considered as a tax haven.